All right, Aaron, you sort of have like a non-hand call. I don't know if I want to write this one up, but it has to do with getting paid off on the river. Maybe you can just go through the hand really quickly, and then we will um, we'll, we'll talk about what happened here. For sure. So uh, we're playing 2-5 at Agua Caliente. In California, okay. Uh, yes, in California. Yep. It's uh, 200 to 1,000 buy-in, and it's nine-handed, and we're $400 effective with the villain who's in the small blind. Did you say and you're 400 effective or 2,000 effective? I'm sorry. 400, 400. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the preflop action is I'm under the gun with two red 10s. Okay. And I open to $15. Okay. And I get UTG plus one, the hijack, the button, and the small blind to call. So plus one, hijack, button, and small blind call. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And the flop comes 10 of clubs, ace of clubs, Three of clubs. Okay, so you flop middle set. Yep. And the action goes, the small blind checks. I bet 35 and everyone folds uh, but the small blind. So you bet 35 small blind calls. Okay, yep. And the turn comes a seven of hearts. Okay. And he checks to me and I bet 100 and he calls again. So check hero bets 100 and he calls obviously you would probably wouldn't want to get check jammed here on the you know on the turn but you've got a set sometimes someone's going to you know flop a, a flush i know that's not the point of this call but okay so you're looking good here you don't want to see a club at the end i'm sure correct yeah yep. and the river comes in offsuit 3 oh so you bowed out yeah okay yep and he now leads for 100 leaving $150 behind so small blind leads for 100 leaving 150 behind obviously the pot is like whatever whatever it is so right. of course you're going to jam right for sure mm -hmm. so here so are jams I, so i think about it for a little bit and then i do jam yep and the weird part about this hand is he grabs his chips in a certain way that he picks them up um, and tilts them to the side and makes a clear forward motion into the pot. Okay. And I then start putting my hands on my cards. And right when he sees me do that, he pulls his, his chips back. So he makes a forward motion into the pot like he's going to call. But I've seen this kind of angle before. I've actually seen people... <laughs> you ever see somebody who makes an all-in bet and then kind of covers their face? Like, can you imagine if you made like an all-in bet, right? And then you sort of hid yourself in your face. I've actually seen people who are their opponents drop a chip in their own chip stack to make it sound like they're calling to try to get some sort of reaction or try to get you as the hero to like reveal what's going on. But he made a forward motion and then you go to turn your cards up and then what happens? So he thinks that he got some sort of tell on you? Uh, something like that. He was, I think he, he might've been drinking um, but the guy to my right looked really confused. The guy, like the whole table was really confused. So, uh, the dealer called for the floor. Um, but you haven't everyone, done it. You haven't revealed your hand though, I right? I haven't, so I haven't revealed my hand. I would, I just asked, is that a call? So did and he, then, did he muck his hand? He didn't muck. Oh, okay. He's just holding his hand. Yeah. Okay. He's just right. hand. Okay. So, so the floor, you. the floor comes over and says, uh, sir, could you please show me what you did? And he shows him what he did, but he, just shows him picking up his chips and tilting them without any forward motion. Right. So then everyone at the table was like, there was forward motion, there was forward motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ruled it as a call. He said, if there was forward motion, it's a call. Now, let me, here's the other frustrating thing before you go on with this story that a lot of people maybe that come from out of town that play in California, for the most part, because California is such a, you know, melting pot of different ethnicities, you will get dealers, many, many dealers, where English is not their first language. And a lot of dealers in LA, a lot of them were Asian who could barely speak English at all. And people get frustrated who are out of town that are coming from places like Texas or Florida where dealers, their first language is English. So when something like this happens, usually the protocol and the correct procedure is to ask if there is some sort of differing story from you know, your opponent, he's saying that he did and what everybody else saying he did, they would ask the dealer. A lot of times you don't have that option in California because the dealer is not going to be able to express exactly what happened with the correct nuance of a certain situation. To be honest with you, people respected me a lot in the 510 game when I played it on a daily basis in com at Commerce. When there were situations that happened like this, 
I would just, t- I knew the floor guys. I'd be like, even if I wasn't involved with the hand, I would be like, do you want me to tell you what happened as he struggled to hear the deal? I'm not taking any sides. I was just trying to accurately explain exactly what happened. So there's that. I don't know if he tried to ask the dealer, he or she, what what had happened, but it, th- there's very little hope that the dealer is going to be able to really explain to the floor exactly what happened here in this case. Right. So like every single person else on the table clearly saw like it was a forward motion. Mm-hmm. Um, so he deemed it as a call. So then I say, could I like, am I showing my hand? He goes, yes, it was a call. So I show my hand, I show tens full and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't show his hand. Um, and he keeps holding his cards and he says, check the cameras. He keeps asking the floor to check the cameras. Like I'm not paying, check the cameras. Like I never called, check the cameras. Well, so, so then what ended up happening with the, like, what did the floor do then? So he didn't pay. So he, yeah, he didn't pay his 150, but in, in the midst of that, he slid me his cards and he said, look what I had. And he showed uh ace of hearts and three of diamonds. Okay. So, so he had a full house too, right? Yeah. So, so I think that kind of uh, messes up his, uh, what he was saying. Well, that's he a ter- was that's, yeah, that, well, that yeah, guy's an idiot because he's never yeah. going to fold the full house, right? Exactly. exactly. I mean, so, that's well, terrible. I, mean, that, I was like, you're never folding. So, um, and he the, still wouldn't uh, pay you. He still wouldn't pay me. So um, I was confused. It's been like, 10, 15 minutes at this point, And I was asking the dealer, why aren't I getting shipped the pot? The floor already said it was a call. So what they did was they gave me the main pot and left his 150 he had behind with him. And they said, we're going to check the cameras. I said, okay. I felt really bad for the entire game. It was getting late. I had to go. Um, and then the floor came back and said, the person upstairs that was looking at the cameras said that um, the main, the ruling was it has to be a forward motion, which they did see in the video but it also needs to be a drop of the chips. (laughs) Well, I mean, there's, I don't, who knows what the actual rule is and how they interpret it at the card room, because the, unfortunately for you, what should have happened is that the guy should have been kicked out. He should have been kicked out. I've told this story before. If he refuses to pay, they'll kick him out. You're not going to get your money back from him until he walks back in and pays it. But I've been paid off by people because they're going to come back into the casino, right? That's what really should go on here. And again, I've done many, many videos on this. It's sort of, it's akin to people stealing your chips off the table too. When you walk away, the casino cannot force anybody to pay you unless the chips are in the pot. Even if he verbally said call, even if he said call, They can't force him. It's a civil action. You can take him to like small claims court. This is how it works in California, but they can't force him. They can bar him and he can never play there again. But what it sounds like to me is, is that now they're just saying, now they're almost ruling in his favor that it's not a call. So you got to see this guy and they're not even kicking him out, right? He's going to continue to play there without paying you. Right. Correct. So I, that's terrible. Yeah. I just, I just left and I asked the the floor uh, was a poker player and he told me, he was like, yeah, dude, like I thought it was a call. Um, and I told him, I was like, Hey, can you like take down my number? Like I should be compensated for something like this. Like this is out, this is outrageous. That's and compensated by who? By the casino or something. No, they're never going to do that. He felt, he felt super bad. And I was like, is there anything you could do? He's like, he's like, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Um, but he never called me back or anything. Here's the thing about getting compensated by the casino. Even say, for example, you had your chip stolen off the table. Let's say that you went to the bathroom right? You had 300 bucks on the table. Someone took your chips and walked away, right? You'd be like, oh my God, isn't the casino going to make good on that? Here's the casino's perspective on that. You can be working with somebody else. You could be working with this guy and set this up. I know that you didn't, and it would be like an elaborate thing, right? But there, in a lot, a lot of these cases, there isn't going to be any wiggle room. So they're never going to make good on a situation like this because you could just be free rolling them. I mean, that just comes from me having experience with casinos that they're not going to pay you off to get involved unless it was some sort of crazy, crazy thing, but definitely not against two players. So that's just not, that's just not going to happen, but they're continuing to let this guy play. Correct. Yeah. He seemed like he was a regular because the guy, the floor knew him by name and he said that it was a call and the other guy at the table also knew him and he was telling him, dude, you called. So it seemed like he, like people knew him there. That guy's a scumbag too. Like if he showed you the ace three, cause he's just showing he won up. One other thing that you can learn about this. I know it's a small pot, but again, this comes from my experience too. When I get into a big pot and anything ever happens that's close, I know you're kind of, you get excited, right? You've got the nuts and you know, you've got the, the best hand. 
it, it sounds like you were halfway there when you said, is that a call? Is that a call? You don't want to do anything. You don't want to do anything like go to turn your, unless you're trying to like give away some sort of reverse tell, but like go to turn over your cards or anything like that. You want to absolutely wait until the guy's action is complete so that you don't get into this situation where you put yourself at risk. It's a terrible thing that happened to you. That guy's a scumbag. He should be kicked out. I don't agree, you know, with that with that ruling. I've always heard kind of like forward motion too, because they, the reason why that rule is there is because they want to prevent this type of thing, right? They don't want to give that guy the opportunity to have that edge where he can get some sort of reaction. By the way, too, in some places, when I left California, they would do a thing where, you know how sometimes people turn their cards over to get a reaction from you? If you moved all in and the guy turned his hand over to try to get a reaction, they did a thing at Commerce where he only had 10 seconds to, to act. That was sort of the, that was the counter to that. So if you want to turn your hand over to get some sort of reaction from your opponent, you're only going to get a 10 second countdown. So there's that. But you want to protect yourself in these situations and protect yourself from anglers and scammers because the only person that's going to protect you is yourself, not the casino. So I'm sorry that happened to you, but live and learn. It was only 150 bucks. The guy's a fucking scumbag. But hopefully in the future, when you're in a similar situation, whether it's a week from now or a year from now, you have chalked this up as experience and it won't happen again. Right. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. All right. I Thanks for the call. I appreciate that.